Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another pen for review and this is, as you can see, an ASC Armando Simone Club. Now this pen is on loan from John at stjohnspens.com. Uh, I'd like to thank John for the loan of this pen for review. Uh, the pen will be going back to John. So if you want to purchase this pen, then do let John know. Uh, if he hasn't sold it already, I'm sure he'll be glad to sell you the pen. So I think let's uh, lift the lid on this box. And first off, we're going to see a box within a box. So I will remove that outer box. And you can see here a, a lovely sort of like magnetic cardboard clamshell type box. Now, if I open the box, you'll see here uh, the Armando Simone Club uh, brochure here with a little bit more info about the Armando Simone Club. And then you'll see the pen on this floating bed. So if I remove uh, the pen, and I'll just remove the box as well, and the floating bed, and then I can show you the pen in all its detail. So this is the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Egyptian Series, and this is King Tutan Karman. Uh, it's a limited edition run of 88 pens worldwide. And uh, it comes with a uh, medium flex nib. And I believe um, that is a 14 count gold nib. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, now, this is actually not made of celluloid. It's made out of, uh, so say, a new in-house cellulose acetate material named Arcola. And uh, apparently it's been developed over the last four years. Several layers were used to deepen and enhance the color and the material that creates a unique pattern. And I have to say, it does look a little bit like uh, a Coca-Cola because, uh, or a cola. Um, it does have that kind of like color to it, that, that sort of deep and rich color. Um, now, in terms of the pen itself, the cap finial uh, goes to a conical point here on the cap finial there. Now, you do have a roller, Italian roller style clip, and the body of, uh, or the, the cap of the pen tapers down to the cap finial, tapers out to essentially what is a cap band there. You'll see the ASC medallion as well, but on that cap band, you see a lot of different Egyptian hieroglyphs and... You can see that there. The cap then tapers down, drops down to the body, and then tapers in slightly to this ring. And then you have the pneumatic uh, filling knob. And these do have a lot of threads on them, um, but it means that there's no way that you're going to open this pen by accident. Now, uh, you'll see here, uh, because it's the Egyptian series, it has engravings here with uh, hieroglyphs. And then you have uh, a hole in the end here, which is the pneumatic filler. So the idea is you put the pen, the nib, in uh, a bottle of ink. Uh, you put your finger over that hole uh, and you push down. That creates a suction. You let your finger off. Ink rushes into essentially what is a rubber or latex sack and fills the pen. And those rubber latex sacks, depending on the ink you use and how well you clean it, uh, should last around five to 10 years. Sometimes they last a lot less. I've seen them last just over a year before you need to maybe get some of those sacks replaced. Other sacks I've had for four or five years, not had a problem with them. Now, <clears throat> I think if you unscrew the cap, you'll see the number eight size Magic Flex nib with the Egyptian logo there on it. And it's a 14 count gold, what essentially is a medium nib. Um, you do have a small section here, then some threads. And then again, you have these Egyptian hieroglyphs that you will see around that band. Uh, there is a bit of a step up, not a huge amount. Uh, and then onto the body itself. Um, the threads are a little bit pronounced. They're not 
sharp on this pen, um, but you do feel it a little bit here uh, on the the bit. There's a bit of a step up to the thread, so you do feel that a little bit there, but it's not in any way uncomfortable. Now, you can't really post the cap. It's not designed to do so. It's not going to pass post past that ring there. But this is quite a uh, long pen anyway, so you really shouldn't need to post that cap. These are super wet writers, and uh, that is uh, something that uh, some people like, some people dislike. But uh, personally, I do prefer wet writing pens. So I think let's do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison, and then we'll do a writing sample. So the full length of the pen, we are looking at about 158 millimeters in length. The length of the cap, we're looking about 72 millimeters in length. And then we'll check the length of the body there. And from the tip of the nib, we're looking about 148 millimeters in length. So that is uh, quite uh, a long pen. I think now what we'll do is we'll do a weight check. Now this pen is uninked, so we'll see what the full weight of the pen is. We are looking at just under 55 grams in weight. The weight of the cap, we are looking at just under 12 grams in weight. And then the weight of the body, we're looking at just over 43 grams in weight. So that really is an, a nice size and also a nice weight. Um, it's not the lightest pen, but it's also not the heaviest pen that I have uh, had in my collection. But this material really is quite stunning. Uh, I have to say that I do like this material. It it has a bit of chatoyance there, uh, this cellulose acetate, and uh, has quite a lot of variation there, but you can see that that is quite a cola bottle like effect going on there so i think with that let's do a comparison with other pens so from left to right we have a cross peerless 125 in platinum a cross peerless 125 in titanium a cross peerless 125 in the quartz blue we have an estabrook sd oversize and this is in the gold rush prospector we have an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra, and uh, this is in the King Tutankhamun. We have a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in the sand, a Leonardo Momento Zero in the Mediterraneo. We have a Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra, and this is in the wild. We have a Wild Eversharp Decker Band Oversize, and then we have another Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra in the black and gold Luchens. So I think let's do a writing sample. So this is the ASC Bologna Extra. And it's the Egyptian series. And this is a King a Tutan. Come on. And it's essentially a medium, but it's a 14 cat gold uh, Magic Flex nib. The ink in here today, I've actually put in uh, an ink from Franklin Christoph. And it's called Sweet Maroon, which I, I think actually complements this pen quite nicely. Uh, I don't actually have any inks named Cola, but if I did, I would probably uh, ink it up with that instead. Uh, but I think this is a, a very nice sort of uh, maroony coloured ink, which I think matches the pen quite nicely. Uh, in terms of line variation, let's take a look here. Um, we can push it a little bit more. So it goes from a Western medium to a Western broad. And this is what I like about the ASC magic flex nibs there's no hard starts or skips there 
Uh, now, in terms of ink wetness, I think let's take a look at that. Now, these will always be very, very wet. So you can see that there. So this is uh, essentially what I would call a fire hose of a nib. It really is a wet writing nib. Um, what do I like? What do I not like about the pen? Well, I love that it is uh, a, a long pen, uh, also a, a moderately weighted pen. It's not too light and it's not too heavy. Um, I do like the, the, the overall girth of the pen as well. I like the Magic Flex nib on it. These are very wet writers. You do have to be a little bit careful when you're writing in a notebook. You're probably going to be waiting several minutes to turn the page. But I always find that's a good opportunity to, to go and make a, a cup of tea or uh, maybe a coffee. Uh, the What do I dislike about the pen? Uh, I've come to dislike the pneumatic filling mechanisms. They are a vintage uh, filling mechanism. But the rubber or latex sacs can deteriorate over time, depending on the ink that you put in them. Likewise, uh, whether or not you clean the pen as well. Uh, I've had some of these sacks that have only lasted just over a year, but I've also had other sacks that have lasted four to five years and still going strong. So I think it's a little bit of a lottery in terms of sacks, but any vintage pen repairer can replace the sacks on these pens. They're very easy to do so. So you shouldn't have any issues there. You can always take it along and get the sack replaced if you want it replaced. So I'd like to thank John from stjohnspens.com for the loan of the pen for review. As I mentioned earlier, this pen will be going back to John. Uh, so if you want to, to get this pen, if he still has it available, uh, send him a message uh, either through his website at stjohnspens.com or on Instagram at stjohnspens. And uh, he also goes to a lot of the UK, European, and now some of the US pen shows. So if you want to see some of these pens up close maybe if you want to buy one of these pens from him then do send him a message see if he's going to a pen show near you uh, and uh, i'm sure he'll he'll be glad to to bring some of these pens along with him so there you have it that's my review of the asc bologna extra egyptian series king tutankhamun in a medium 14 count gold nib thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and i'll see you on the next pen video Bye bye